Okay guys, so we'll just make some modifications to the previous two wire that we were working on before. So on the previous video we had this start push button and when we press this guy then it got our conveyor rocking and rolling. So let's open up our TAA portal. In my case I'm using TAA portal, but open up whatever PLC program you're working on before. So I just had this as project 5, so I'm going to open this guy up. And we'll get that two wire rocking and rolling. And then we'll just add on a, a holding contact below. If you're using the Siemens PLC, then you'll be on this page next. Uh, we're going to configure a device. And everything should already be set up. So it should bring up a, an image of our PLC there. There we go. So PLC 1. We'll double left click on this guy. Okay, brings up an image of our PLC there. Again, if we wanted to see it, we can go to 400%. And then just scroll down, we'll see everything there. Okay, again, if you're confused as to why um, the labels are here but not on the inputs, that's because when we changed the, uh, the inputs, we had to offset them by 10 to get the factory I.O. to work. Okay, so we need to look at our main ladder diagram. So we're going to click right here to see our project tree. Then we're going to go down here to Program Blocks. We'll open up the main OB1. And if you haven't done anything since the last class, this program will probably be, still be in your PLC. Uh, if not, you can download it to your PLC. So I'm just going to go online and turn on my monitoring. And we'll bring up our Factor IIO. We'll go to File, Drivers, and we'll just make sure that we're talking to it. Because right now we're not talking to um, the PLC. So scroll down to your appropriate PLC and hit connect. There we go. And then you should see a green sign here. There we go. So we're ready to go. Let's see our TIA portal, see if that's working. Okay, looks good. Again, we have orange on the top and we've got green for our logic continuity. Uh, let's make this a little bit smaller and we'll split the screen with this guy. There we go. Okay, and if we put this into the run mode, then our palette appears. And let me just turn up the volume here. Okay, once we hit this start push button, then it should turn on the conveyor and turn on our run light. Beautiful, looks good. Oh, yeah, I've got the microphone in so you can't hear the, uh, the sound of the conveyor right now. Okay, if I let go of that push button, then it should stop everything. Excellent. Okay, so let's reset this. Um, our next step is to go offline and add in, um, you know what, actually, let's start right here. So let's make this a little bit bigger. Um, let's stop the animation. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in an additional push button onto our electrical box here. So um, let's grab this start push button. And let's just move it over a touch. And then we're going to scroll down here and find a stop push button. And again, the name will appear right here when I hover over each unit. So there's a stop button. And just keep in mind that the stop button is a normally closed and the start button is always a normally open on the factory IO. Okay, so these, this is already set up as a normally closed and this is a normally open. Let's just double click and see whether everything's flush mounted. Looks good. Okay, and if we scroll in, we can see there's the stop and the start. And each of those guys has both an input and an output. So the input being the button and the output being the light. Okay, now that we've added in this new input, we need to account for it on our I.O. So we're going to go to File. We're going to go to Drivers again. And that's why I put the, the Start button at Input 0.1 because I knew in this next video I was going to put the stop as input zero. So I am left clicking on here. I'm dragging this over, hovering it over until it sits on top of this unit here and drop it in. And now I've got my stop and my start and the same two outputs that are there. Okay. We'll go back to our animation. Um, you can now save this as your three wire if you want. So three wire control, hit save. There we go. And now we can grab that anytime we need that now. It's going to be available in our, our personal scenes right here. So there's my three-wire control. 
Okay, now that we've created everything on our factory IO to accommodate that new stop and start push button, now let's go over to our PLC program. Again, I'm using the um, Siemens TIA portal, but use whatever you've got in the shop there, whether it be Allen Bradley or the Tweedo Suite or any other PLC. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this guy offline. And then we can make some changes to our program. So we have a start push button. In series with that, we need to put a stop push button. So we're going to use an XIC or again, what they call a normally open contact. So we're going to drop that guy in there. And based off of what we just did on the factory IO, that guy was uh, input 0.0. .0. And we'll hit enter. There we go. Okay, we want to label that tag, so we're going to right click on that guy. Then we're going to rename the tag. And input 0.0, .0 is going to be our stop push button. Beautiful. Okay, now in addition to the start push button, we need to do a three wire control. Three wire control just basically consists of another contact that's in parallel with your initiating switch. Our initiating switch is the start push button. So right here, we're going to add in another rung. Then we're going to add in an XIC. And we're going to bring this guy up, tie it into here. Wait, that didn't work. Let's try that again. So we'll grab this. Uh, there we go. We'll bring it up till we see green. There we go. And now we're just going to do this as an open loop, meaning that we're not actually seeing anything out in the field. Like there's no signal from out in the field. It's just looking at inside the PLC and seeing whether we have turned the conveyor on. So we're going to address this the same as Q0.0. .0. So we'll double click on this guy. And then we can scroll down here until we see that guy and double left click outside of it. And then it cleans up your ladder diagram. Looks good. Now we've got a three wire control. We've got a start, a stop, a holding contact. In this case, we have the two outputs, the conveyor run and the start. Excellent. Now we need to download those changes to our PLC. Okay, it's done so the compiling. It's got one warning here just saying that I have additional inputs that weren't there before. Uh, so we're going to download to the PLC by hitting load. Beautiful, loading complete, error zero, warning zero, nice. Okay, let's drop this guy down. Let's put this into monitoring mode. And let's bring up our factory I.O. And we'll split the screen again. Okay, so we are now in the monitoring mode. You can see here that we have orange on the top, green here for our logic continuity. So because our stop push button is already closed in our factory I.O., then this is true. And it's just waiting for the start push button to be pressed now. Okay, so let's turn on our factor IO by hitting the run button here. That provides us with our palette there. And if we just scroll out here, we can see most of the conveyor. So it's going to come from the emitter and go to the remover. So as soon as we hit this push button right here for our start, then we should find that this is true. This turns on and our start push button light turns on. And when the conveyor turns on, then we're providing us with another path of logic. So when I let go of the start push button, it will keep the conveyor and the start push button light illuminated. Okay, so let's hit that button now. There we go. Nice. And all I have to do is just tap it. And now it's running. And you can see here that once, as I hit that push button, let's scroll in there, right? So as I hit this guy, you can see it changing on my PLC program there. Beautiful. Not only is the conveyor running, but the green light is on. And now if I hit the stop push button, then it should stop that conveyor and turn off this light. Very nice. Excellent. Okay, so we have another light here for the stop. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put um, an illuminated push button, just like we have here. Like when we hit the start push button, this guy turns on, right? So when the conveyor is not running, then I'd like to have this illuminated push button go red. So let's try that and then we'll finish off this video. So we could get crazy and start using memory bits and everything in order to control each of our lights. 
Um, but I'm just going to try this, just have it where if the conveyor is off, then I want to have that red illuminated push button turning on. So I'm going to use an XIO, or what they call a normally closed switch. So I'm going to drop that guy in here. I need to put in another rung, though. Okay, then I'm going to use an XIO. And then I'm going to use uh, an additional output. And I'm going to say, for this guy, if my conveyor is not running, so remember this is an XIO, which looks for a zero in the memory, or no voltage going out to the field, or that something is actually off. And so if the conveyor is off, I'd like to turn on my stop push button light. So I haven't uh, put in that output yet. So let's do that. Let's go back over to here. Let's go to file. Let's go to drivers. And we'll add in another light here. So the stop button light is going to come over here. Again, I'm left clicking, dragging it over to output two there. And as soon as you do that, it's part of your program now. So output two, Q02 is what we need. So let's label this Q02. And then we'll double left click outside of it. Obviously, there's no tag name to it. So we're going to right click and then rename the tag. And this guy is going to be our stop push button light. Again, other ways to do this other than the way that I've just shown, like using memory bits and stuff like that. So like we could do like a... Um, a memory bit here and then if it, the memory bit is true we could turn on down here the conveyor and the start push button and the memory bit was not true then turn on our stop push button light so a number of different ways that we can do this so we've made some changes here let's download that to our plc okay we're going to load that in Looks good. Everything's cool. Let's go into monitoring mode now. Let's drop this bad boy down. There we go. Okay, it looks like this is still running. I must have stopped the uh, animation prior to hitting the stop push button. So let's bring up our animation here. Let's go back here um, and we'll hit play now. There we go. Hey, nice. So as soon as I hit that stop push button, then this light has now turned on. Uh, let me take out the mic, the external microphone, and then we can hear the conveyor actually running. Give me two seconds here. All right, guys. So hopefully you're getting pretty proficient at using the factory I.O. now um, and at creating your PLC program. So again, just now that we've got the, the sound going, we can hit the start push button here, turn on our conveyor. And it just keeps rocking and rolling. Once you let go of the start push button, then you can see that the conveyor is still running. And obviously the start push button light is still illuminated. At any point that we hit the stop push button, it's gonna turn off both of these outputs. When this is no longer true or off, then the stop push button light is going to illuminate. There we go. Excellent, all right guys. Uh, that's pretty good so far. We've got uh, our basics on the two wire and the three wire. Uh, next thing we need to do is to build up uh, our toolbox using the timers and the counters. So keep going in the, the exercise booklet that I've given you or in the playlist that follows here and we'll have another, a couple of more videos there on timers and counters to follow. All right guys, thanks for your patience. We'll see you in the next video.